In this video, we will be looking at virtual private networks. So we're going to try to look at why we need VPNs. We're also going to look at the IPsec protocol suite, and we're going to wrap up by looking at the types of VPNs that we can have in Cisco networks. Now, let's get started. So what is a VPN? A VPN is a virtual private network, and it's just a private network that runs over a public infrastructure. So it's a private network, that runs over a public infrastructure. And in this case, the public infrastructure can be the ISP network. It can also be the internet. It really doesn't matter. The public infrastructure is just any infrastructure that you pay for, but you do not own. So in a VPN, what we do is we use public infrastructure to transport our private information. So although the public infrastructure is available to the public domain, you can actually create your own private network across that public infrastructure. So if, for instance, we have router 1, which is connected to the Internet, and router 2 is also connected to the Internet, we can create a private network between router 1 and router 2. And we're going to use that network to transport information between router 1 and router 2. Now, if you've been in Cisco long enough, you must have heard about things like, things like GRE tunnels, and GRE stands for Generic Router Encapsulation. It's just a tunnel that is created between two endpoints. Now, GRE tunnels are used to make two devices on a common public network seem like they're connected directly to each other. So when you have a GRE tunnel between R1 and R2, router 1 and router 2 can now share an IP network. So you can have something like 192.168.1.0 as the IP address of GRE tunnel, and router 1 can be .1 and router 2 can be .2. So it seems like they're point-to-point -point network connected to each other, but what's actually happening is that you've created a tunnel across the public infrastructure. Now, GRE tunnels on their own are very insecure. The sense that there's no authentication. They don't have any integrity of the data. They're not protecting the confidentiality of the data or anything like that. So all the security issues that would come with a public infrastructure uh, are still inherited by the GRE tunnel. And so we have to find a way to secure the private information that is being sent over that public infrastructure. Now, there are many security issues that we can look at, but the three most common are authentication, and we know what authentication is. Authentication is just trying to verify the identity of the person that is sending the packet. So router one is trying to verify that it's router two that's actually sending traffic to it, for instance. Or for instance, we have a telecommuter or somebody working from home. You want to verify that that person working at home is actually the person that's not someone else. So that's one security issue. The second issue is the integrity of the data. Because we're sending the data over the public network, uh, we want to also ensure that the data is being sent as the data is being received. So in the case of R1, we want to ensure that the data that R1 is sending to R2 is actually a data that R2 is receiving and has not been compromised on the public infrastructure. And a third security issue is confidentiality. And with confidentiality, we want to check that there is someone that is sniffing on the public network. Even if they get a hold of data that's being sent across the network, it would not make any sense to them or meaning to them because the data would be confidential in the sense that only the person that the data is meant for would understand the data. Every other person will not understand the data. So technically, the way we ensure confidentiality is by what's called encryption. And with encryption, what it means is that we would encrypt the data so that it's only at the other end that the data can be decrypted. And that's when data would make sense. So even if someone in the public network is not honest, like if your ISPs hang uh, over you and they want to use your data for something else, even if they get a hold of the data, it would make sense to them because they would have to have the key to decrypt the data. And with integrity, the way we solve the integrity problem is by hashing. What hashing does is, if you remember from PPP, what hashing what we do is we use an algorithm. And if you remember from PPP, with hashing, we actually use an algorithm to create a hash. And then the hash is sent with the information to the destination. So that when the information has reached the destination, the receiver would actually compute its own hash and compare it to the hash that was received. So if the hash is not equal to the hash that it received, then it's known that the information has been tampered with and it's not going to use that information. And for authentication, we can use shared secret keys. We can also use what's called a public key for infrastructure, infrastructure and we, we'll talk about all these protocols in a second. Now, the network security scope is actually quite wide. 
For instance, we have entirely different course, uh, course series, the CCNA security series that addresses network security issues and things like VPNs and other network security technologies. And in fact, there's another series in the CCNP security syllabus that actually focuses on VPNs. So this video is not trying to teach you everything there is to know about VPNs. And in fact, the ICDN2 exam, you just need to know what VPN means and how they work. We don't need to deeply explore VPNs in this particular series because it's a whole different series that actually focuses on security technologies. So if you're interested, you can check out the CCNA security series and the CCMP security series. And those uh, series are focused on Cisco security. But for this video, all we're trying to do is just explain the concepts and look at the types of VPNs that we have. And that will, will be all we have to do for the ICND2 series. Now let's look at the IPsec protocol suite. Now IPsec stands for IP security. And it's not really a protocol, but it's a protocol suite, meaning that it's a suite of different protocols that is used to determine how VPNs are formed. Now in this uh, protocol suite, we have many individual protocols that deal with different aspects of the VPN. So the goal here is to make sure that we can secure private data over a public infrastructure. Uh, so for instance, in terms of authentication, we have what's called pre-shared keys and the cert uh, certificate authority. So if you wanna have a VPN between two ends, for instance, router one and router three, if you're using the pre-shared key, what happens is that we'll configure a key on router one. For instance, we can say it's secret. So we can say secret, and this will be our key, and it has to match on router three, two. So when they actually negotiate the VPN, they're actually going to exchange this pre-shared keys. They're going to validate each other so, they, so that they can authenticate. And if the pre-shared keys don't match, then the VPN will not come up. That's one way to authenticate. The other way is through what's called a certificate authority. And in this case, what happens is that router one and router two will actually have a connection to a certificate authority. So we have this CA somewhere in the public domain, but it might even be in the private domain. It doesn't matter. And then router one has a connection to the CA. Router three has a connection to the CA. So the certificate authority is a trusted issuer of certificates. And it's this certificates that are actually used to authenticate between these two endpoints. Now a certificate authority is not only used for VPNs, they're also used for web servers, for instance. If you try to access HTTPS website, normally that website must have a certificate authority that will be verified by a browser. So for instance, if you're using Chrome or Firefox or anything like that, the browser would actually try to authenticate the certificate. And if the web server is not using a trusted certificate authority, your web client, which is your browser, would warn you and say something like, the certificate is not trusted just to show you that the certificate authority is not trusted, and then you can override it and still connect with the website, or you can leave the website because it's not trusted. So that's an example of certificate authority. We also have encryption in the IPsec protocol suite. Now for encryption, we use the, the DES algorithm, which is a data encryption scheme. Now the DES algorithm is a 56-bit key. And what this key is used to do is actually use to encrypt the packet that is sent across the VPN. Now with the encryption, the larger the keys, the better and more secure the encryption protocol is. So for instance, we could use DES, which is a 56-bit key, or we could use triple DES, and triple DES is just three times the DES key, so it's about 168 bits. While we could also use the advanced encryption scheme, which is a 256-bit key, and that's what most VPNs use today. So we start off with DES. You know, start off with DES, which is 56-bit. And as computers have gotten more powerful and DES encryption was being broken, they moved on the triple DES, which is 168 bits long. And after those ones were still broken, uh, then we moved on to advanced encryption scheme, which is a 256-bit long. But the thing is, the router supports all three encryption schemes because it can be forming a VPN with an older router that cannot support a 256-bit encryption scheme. For, you know, so for backwards compatibility, the router actually supports DES, triple DES, and AES. Now for hashing, hashing is to ensure the integrity of the data. We can use the MD5 algorithm, which is a Meshes Digest 5 algorithm for hash. Or we can also use the uh, SHA-1 algorithm, 
Also, when we're looking at encryption, we talked about having 56-bit keys and 168-bit keys and 256-bit keys. Now, these keys are actually managed on the network using what's called the Diffie-Hellman algorithm. So we have uh, Diffie-Hellman groups 1, 2, 5, and 7, which are also protocols in the IPsec suite that is used for key uh, management. So we have Diffie-Hellman groups 1, 4, 5, and 7, which is also part of the IPsec uh, suite that is used for key management. Now, all these protocols, they're all part of the IPsec suite. And when you're trying to form a VPN, whether you're trying to form it between two sites and are trying to form it between a site and the remote user, what you have to do is to negotiate which protocol to use. So usually what you're going to do is to say that uh, for authentication, I'm going to use pre-shared keys. For encryption, I'm going to use triple DES. For hashing, I'm going to use MD5. For key management, I'm going to use uh, Diffie-Hellman, group one. And then everybody has to agree on that before the VPN would form. Now, different devices actually have different default protocols that are used for authentication and encryption and things like that. So you're forming a VPN, for instance, between uh, router one and maybe this device is a Juniper device. Or if we say a checkpoint device. Uh, the default protocols we're going to use might be different. So what you need to do is to talk to the administrator at the other end and you're going to agree on a set of protocols. So we're going to say for authentication, we're going to use this. For encryption, we're going to use this. For key management, we're going to use you know, this. So when you agree on the protocols, they can now establish a VPN, and then you can start communicating on the secure private network, even though you're using a public infrastructure. Now, the last thing we're going to do before we wrap up this VPN video is to look at the types of VPNs that, are, that we have. Now, generally, we have two kinds of VPN. Have the, we have the site-to-site -site VPN and the remote access VPN. Now for the site-to-site -site VPN, the VPN is actually formed between two devices. So we have a network behind R1, which is a private network, and we have a network behind R2. So usually let's say this is the headquarters and this is the branch. They're both connected to the public network. Let's just say it's the internet. So this is probably the case. So you have the headquarters in London, and have the branch somewhere in India, let's say Bangalore. Now, whether you are in London or Bangalore, you actually have internet connectivity. So instead of trying to build a WAN between London and Bangalore, what happens is that we're going to use the internet. So what happens is that we're going to use the internet to transport our private network. So we're going to build a VPN. And the good thing about this is that because we own both devices at HQ and at Bangalore, we actually don't need to pay any extra money to our ISP. So we're just still going to use the service the IP gives us for the internet. But we're going to build our tunnel over that internet. And that's a typical example of site-to-site -site VPN. Now, of course, all the protocols and parameters have to match on both side devices for the VPN to form. Uh, but once the VPN forms, then all users behind the network that have been specified to go across VPN can go across the VPN. So that's why it's called a site-to-site -site VPN, because you're building a private network between one site and another site. Now the site-to-site -site VPN can be just land-to-land -land VPNs between two sites, and it can also be like a hub-and-spoke scenario, where for instance, we have one other phase, I want to connect to many spokes, so I want another VPN between uh, these two guys, and then one another VPN and things like that, and Cisco has many interesting uh, VPN protocols to do that. There's something called the dynamic multipoint VPN. There's another thing called the group encryption transport VPN. So we have the DMV, VPN, the Git VPN, all kinds of VPN protocols that can be used for this kind of scenario. But they're way beyond the scope of the ICND2 series. Now coming to the, another kind of VPN, which is a remote access VPN, we have what's called the Easy VPN. An Easy VPN just requires a software. So <clears throat> typically what we are going to do is you're going to go onto Cisco's website and you're going to download a VPN client software to a local machine. And you're going to configure the VPN server on a Cisco device. So in this case, you can configure on a Cisco router or a Cisco firewall. And then for anybody that wants to connect to the VPN server, they're going to have to install this VPN clients on the system. So for instance, if you have someone working from home, you're going to install VPN client, and then they're going to remotely connect into the hub. And that session will be built um, for them. So it's on demand. And then when they're done, they're going to disconnect from the session. 
and then the VPN would be brought down. So that's how easy VPN works. For WebVPN, it's pretty much the same thing, except that we don't need a software anymore. We can just go online. So we go to the web browser, and from the web browser, we're actually going to connect to the VPN. We can access the same kind of access we would have had if we were using EasyVPN. Now, of course, this is going to take different sets of configuration to configure uh, these different kinds of VPN. But like I said, that's beyond the scope of the ICND2 series. What Cisco is just trying to do with the ICND2 series is just to expose CCNA students to the kinds of VPNs that we have and the options that we have. So if you're interested in learning more about these VPNs, then of course you can just go on to the CCNA security syllabus to learn more about VPNs. So in this video, we started by looking at why we need VPNs, and we looked at the security issues that we had in the issues with integrity, with confidentiality, with authentication. And then we explored all the protocols under the IPsec protocol suite. So there are triple DS, AES, uh, pre-shared keys, certificate authorities, MD5, SHA-1, Defi Hellman groups, and things like that. And finally, we looked at the types of VPNs that we can have. So we explored the site-to-site VPNs and then we'll access VPNs. Thank you very much for watching.